So um, our next presentation is by Christian Backstrom, who is the C CEO of Control Things, and he's going to talk to us about identities for equipment and people. So now last week we heard about the connections, how to secure the connections, and then we, I, I, I hope we get into the real rat hole of what, what these identifiers and, and identities are and how to, how, to, how, how to secure them. So Christian, please. Thank you very much. And thank you for the opportunity to speak on this very exciting uh, event. There have been uh, awesome presentations before me. So, um, yes, I'm Christian from Control Things, and um, I'm, uh, you saw the title. But uh, I'm going to talk about two, two different uh, software technologies that we have uh, developed. Uh, and um, they, they, are, uh, they, they do fit on, on embedded devices. Uh, even though, as, uh, as a disclaimer, I can mention that we haven't yet been using uh, Riot. Uh, we could do it, and uh, these are portable for, for Riot as well. We have more, more um, experiences from uh, free Artos until uh, up to today. So first of all, uh, who we are. We are a small uh, Finnish company with um, a professor uh, founding together with uh, Jan Neumann, who is here, my, my colleague. Um, so Professor Kari Fremling, who is a, dub, a double profes professor both in U Umeå, in Sweden, and uh, here at Aalto, uh, he's also the main architect of uh, two uh, interoperability standards, OMI and OTF, and uh, one true pioneer of IoT with the first uh, scientific articles mentioning Internet of Things. So uh, I will briefly go through what we, what our background, what we've done. Uh, we have been uh, founded um, years ago uh, and worked uh, as a consultancy company uh, in the beginning together with an air handling unit manufacturer, Enavent, in Porvo. And uh, we are still uh, cooperating with them. Um, so they, they have uh, several product lines with uh, different air handling unit uh, um, automation solutions and uh, control panels and remote, uh, uh, remote, remote management. Uh, interfaces and uh, here are three of them uh, the last one here uh, has been extended now with an uh, app and Wi-Fi module solution and our uh, software has been quite everywhere in in their um <coughs> in their solutions I will look more on this last one where we have uh, embedded our own technology for device pairing this is one of the two uh, technologies that, that I will talk about so device pairing between uh, a mobile app and uh, an embedded device, in this case a Wi-Fi module, which is connected to, uh, to the air handling unit using uh, Modbus. <coughs> so so uh, wha what it does, it, it, um, it uses uh, crypto identities both in the app and in the uh, Wi-Fi module to, to establish a secure connection and for authenticating in, uh, and encrypting. Uh, <coughs> so what, what you're also able to do uh, with, with the device identities is verifiable audit trails, and then that's about the, the second, uh, second technology that I'm going to talk about. But let's, let's take a look for first on the device pairing and come back later to the verifiable audit trail so solution. So uh, here's a short uh, introduction on, on how um, the pairing goes. Because uh, an air handling unit, uh, these Enervent units didn't have any uh, internet connection in, in advance. So they uh, equipped them with uh, a small Wi-Fi module which is retrofitable. Uh, you will see here uh, uh, less than two minutes animation mode about how, how it goes. Uh, you <coughs> This uh, unmount the, the traditional um, control panel and uh, disconnect the uh, Modbus cable, puts it into the Wi-Fi module and chains it. So, so both, both the uh, Wi-Fi module and the panel are on the same Modbus cable. It gets the power and starts hosting an, an Wi-Fi access point. The app uh, uh, prompts you for, for a name and alias for, for the... For the um, crypto identity which the app has created, and the Wi-Fi module has likewise created a local identity. Then, <coughs> the, uh, 
you commission a new machine, in this case, uh, because you're the first, first user taking the, the error handling unit in, in use, the app will join the access point that the Wi-Fi module is hosting. So this, so far, everything happens locally, uh, just between, between the app and the Wi-Fi module. Then it uh, pairs, the first uh, app becomes the, uh, the admin of the Wi-Fi module, and then, then you can uh, provision it with uh, uh, wireless LAN uh, access to the, to the local building network. And from there it can get go out to internet and even um, connect to a relay server so that it's, it's remotely accessible for other users or for this user later. So now, now you're ready to control. There was no um, sign up sign in forms. It, it, it runs very, uh, completely locally, independently of internet or remotely over internet. <coughs> and the security is end to end encrypted between the Wi Fi module and the app. So uh, later users um, can, can request access of, uh, if they discover this air handling unit at the same subnet, for instance, then they can uh, send an access request. Um, <coughs> so there you find, find air handling unit, send request, and the, the admin user need to accept or decline it. It receives a push notification to the admin phone and you can, you can uh, accept or decline it. So as you see, this solution has now, now been branded. Uh, it's a white label technology, a software technology, so it's branded for, for, for the customer. But this is something that we can uh, very easy, easily duplicate for, for others, other companies as well. <coughs> so then, yeah, and, and to mention also, there, uh, there is uh, cloud, uh, cloud connectivity also for, for push notifications mainly. That's uh, very optional in this case, but it's, it's used for push notifications and could be used also for, for uh, time series logging or, or remote management via, via cloud. <coughs> but that's not necessary. Then to the other software uh, technology, that's, that's an innovation of ours. That's about how to produce verifiable uh, log files or verifiable audit trails in such a way that every event is chained together with the other, um, the previous events, uh, which allows you to, to verify that nothing has been modified, nothing has been added, uh, and no records are even uh, removed from, from the chain. <coughs> and the order has, hasn't been changed. So this is just an example uh, where we see it applicable, for instance, in a, um, electric vehicle uh, battery, w which can uh, log um, the, the usage, how, how much, in what, what kind of uh, conditions and environments, and how, how much are you discharging or, or charging the battery, and how, what, what have been the uh, history of the battery that can affect the price of the whole uh, uh, electrical vehicle, the condition of the ba battery. And if you can do it in a verifiable way, uh, you can probably get more price out of it also. <coughs> this is another uh, example use case that we have uh, been validated uh, with, with uh, partners that uh, it's usable. Okay, here, here we are uh, mentioning um, ARM Embed Linux, so it's a bit uh, bigger devices, but it, it fits also on smaller devices, but uh, in this uh, Embed Linux case, there is uh, the hardware enforced security with, uh, with an opportunity to uh, uh, use this technology as a um, Docker container, um, as a clear software component. So, so uh, you, you can <coughs> store the, um, the keys securely in the hard hardware en enforced security environment and uh, isolated from, from the other applications. But uh, what, what the problem that we can uh, solve here is is to make um, the buffer memory tamper resistant. So that would fit, for instance, medical equipment. I will uh, mention a few other um, use cases where, where the, of course, all kind of black box recording be, being vehicles or uh, vessels, uh, but al also a launch status checklist that you need 
uh, need to verify that they haven't been in any way tampered. You can uh, require certain events that they have, have actually been uh, happening before, before the train or uh, airplane takes off or so. Uh, but also uh, logging containers, track and trace, uh, you, can, um, you can provide verifiable proof of delivery uh, if you have a, a log file of this in a smart container. And um, uh, handing over of responsibility. So, so for instance, uh, in autonomous uh, modes, or or uh, you have a skipper or, or pilot, uh, or or an autonomous uh, mode. So, so you can verify that uh, who has been in charge at uh, every point in time. Service books, um, uh, main, uh, maintenance logs, preven preventive maintenance. You you can uh, have a. Uh, logbook of, of your so service that is uh, tamper resistant in this way. That's, that was all from my presentation. Any questions? Yes. Thanks for your presentation. Um, the, the pairing process uh, sounded quite uh, neat in the sense that it's fast, um, but how does it detect the presence of adversaries that might intercept that pairing process? Um, so actually, it's, it is uh, vulnerable in a, a short period of time. If you're, uh, this was based that uh, if, if, uh, if you're on the local subnet, it, it will host an access point for just a couple of minutes. And you need to be there uh, at that time trying to, to do the pair, and then it closes down and you need to reset it. And if it fails, then, then uh, you, you will have to reset, factory reset and uh, start over. But the first user coming uh, will take the ownership. It's like setting up a new computer. Uh, when you're the first user, you, you get the admin. But but you but you wouldn't but you wouldn't know if there's someone else in the room who is just who just claimed to be the admin and from that point in time intercept, intercepts communication. Um, actually, uh, okay. If, if you're quick to, to hack the system uh, immediately after, then then you could probably is even prove it. But you will see if you're the first user or or later user if, if the system. If, if I may, I, I just here publicly offer your own um, option how to fix that, and I want it to be public so you can't patent it, sorry about that. But you could have a QR code in the device which is giving you a security key for the initial Wi-Fi, and then you could take a picture of the QR code, and you would have the security key for the Wi-Fi which is uh, device specific, and in that way the application would know that it's really connecting to the right device, and because it's a, yeah, it depends on still on Wi-Fi security. You could have there an additional layer of security as well because QR codes are big enough. That's that's correct. And uh, in, in this case, the customer hasn't uh, want want to pay for that, but but that's correct. That that's a security improvement. Mm -hmm. Currently, this, this one may be very well hidden in the construction, and and you can do the pairing just with powering uh, powering on the air handling unit to start. Yeah. Okay, next question there. I wanted to extend on that. There's even a better option with a QR code. Everyone who is intercepting the parcel can also scan that. If you are generating the key on device on the first boot and use a uh, status LED to morse it out, it's even more secure. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Mr. Christian. So when talking about the verifiable log trail, right, I have two parts of the question. So the first part is, are you following a blockchain-based model? So is, it a, is, is some form of decentralization involved? So in order to verify, so are you following a proof of work consensus mechanism or any other consensus mechanism? Because since you mentioned it's patent pending, I'm a little curious. Thank you. Yes, yes, I'm happy to answer that. Uh, um, this is based on, on two, two or more devices working together, a log, logging device and a triggering device. And they are packing, packing uh, the, the log events together in such a way that they are chained. If you get access to the, to the log file, then you can verify the clearance. 
But no, it's not distributed as a blockchain uh, across the planet, and uh, it, this uh, makes it much more lightweight. It makes it fit on, on these small embedded devices as well. Uh, it, it, uh, it's uh, very, very lightweight. Uh, it, it's using uh, di digital signatures, and it's expecting you to be able to uh, resolve the trust to designing uh, identities using, for instance, PKI. Uh, but uh, so who has signed what? That's uh, that's not. Uh, um, you can you can just see that you have signatures from uh, from certain public keys, but then then, then to verify who's the public keys, then then you may use PKI. Uh, hi, Mohit. Uh, so. This is not really a question to you, but maybe more an observation to what Pekka said. So yes, it provides better security, but there is definitely an additional cost. If I have to put a different key pair on every device in the factory, not all companies can do that and are willing to do that, so there's the cost. Then as the gentleman after you said that anyone who has access to the QR code might have done, done it before you, so I agree with him that generating a key pair at, at the boot time would probably make more sense. And at least in the video I saw the device has some kind of a seven segment display that could be used for something more, more dynamic. So cost is definitely a factor that comes into when, when putting keys in the factory. Um, I like to add on that, that uh, seven segment display, that's, that's a separate, separate component that uh, this, this Wi-Fi module can run independently of, of the control panel, but it's typical that it's just chained behind it. This, in general, this is a very hugely interesting problem, how to do the initial pairing, as many of you know. So you can use voice, you can use the LED there on the device for communicating key and, and so on. So there are lots of choices. Um, and uh, I think there may be something for you even to find that you could patent, but I, don't, I, I think most of the good solutions have probably already already published somewhere like the QR codes that is well-known technology. Um, any other questions? If not, then um, I think we want to move forward. So Michael, Michael, yeah. you're next. Yeah. <laughs> so.